Darshan Maharaja here. I am sure you have seen the video from yesterday where uh, some protesters in uh, favor of uh, pro-Palestine protesters, you can call them, uh, burning the Canadian flag and chanting death to Canada, among other chants. Uh, I posted about this in the morning, uh, expressing my disapproval and uh, stating my opinion that uh, someone who burns or otherwise disrespects the Canadian flag should be punished. Now, a lot of replies on that post of mine, uh, ignoring the non-serious ones. I mean, they'll be there. That's part and parcel of uh, life on social media. But the other, the serious ones, uh, were uh, basically of three types. One was saying that this is perfectly legal in Canada. The other said that uh, it's legal in the U.S. also. Someone also opined that it is legal in the United Kingdom also. And the third variety of replies was uh, that... Uh, you know, similar disrespect was shown for the Canadian flag uh, during the truckers' convoy. So where were you at that? Now, as for the first one, the legality, uh, that is going to be the main topic of exploration in this video. So I'll come to it after I have quickly dealt with uh, the other two. A lot of people saying that uh, it is legal in uh, the United States of America, but there are a lot of uh, differences in the legal arrangements in the two countries, namely US and Canada. Uh, when Canada legalized same-sex marriage, it was illegal in the US. When Canada legalized marijuana, it was illegal in the US. So whether something is legal in the US or not, is not a deciding factor in whether it should be legal in Canada or not. And for the most part, the people offering this argument are the same ones who otherwise look down their noses at the United States of America. But when it suits their argument, they try to take inspiration from the arrangement uh, that exists in the United States of America. So, that is not, as I said, a deciding factor. In fact, when it comes to legalization of marijuana, the United Nations wrote to the government of Canada saying that Canada was going to be in violation of uh, uh, various treaties that had been signed at the global level regarding narcotics. Dating back to 1962, and we disregarded and went ahead and legalized marriage. So what others say has some bearing on what we do in Canada. But in the end, it has to be our decision. Whether you agree with uh, the legalization of marijuana or same-sex marriage or not, you have to agree that the precedent exists where we have uh, ignored what others have to say about our laws and our legal arrangements inside Canada. That is number one. Number two, as regards the truckers' convoy, uh, this was more than two and a half years ago, so I don't remember if I have, if I did say anything about uh, the misuse of Canadian flag at the time. I don't remember, but in case I didn't, then let me do it now. I disapprove of that. As long as they were flying the Canadian flag in the proper way, that is fine. But if they were flying it upside down or with some kind of a derogatory remark for Prime Minister Trudeau, etc., that to my mind is a defacement of the Canadian flag and I cannot agree with that. So hopefully that settles that debate. Now let us turn to the legality part of it. And it is true that uh, burning or otherwise mistreating the Canadian flag is legal in Canada. But my point here is that things that were once legal are now illegal and vice versa. For example, there was no law against discrimination at one point in time. So it was legal, but now it is illegal. And things like uh, same-sex marriage and marijuana were illegal. Hard drugs 
are still illegal, but uh, there is a wink, wink, nudge, nudge arrangement where uh, we don't go hard on uh, people who are consumed. Uh, that is a separate debate as to whether that is the correct approach or not. But my point here is that legality of things changes over time because the law has to keep changing according to the social atmosphere that exists at a particular point in time. So it behooves us to revisit the legality of uh, either burning or uh, disrespecting the Canadian flag. I'm a freedom of expression guy, as hopefully you know. But this is something, an inquiry worth having. Because there are uh, certain situations that I can envisage where uh, this treatment of the flag uh, can be seen as being problematic. In the abstract, yes, we can see that it's a freedom of expression issue and therefore there is a charter protection for freedom of expression and therefore it should be legal. But one key test of legality is whether it is applied evenly in different circumstances. Now, Let's look at other countries. And in this, of course, over the past one year, the Israeli flag has come under a special attack. It has been burned, it has been ripped up, it has been torn apart, stomped on, etc. That has also been happening with the Indian flag. The earliest instance that I am aware of is from 2007, when there was some kind of a... a function in Brampton and some uh, pro-Khalistan protesters uh, stomped on the Indian flag. Now, if we are going to say that any country's flag can be treated this way, you run into problems because the flag of Saudi Arabia has a religious inscription on it. In fact, it is the uh, avowal of faith in Islam. So if you stomp on it, now it becomes uh, insulting a religion. Same thing with Pakistan. Their flag contains the crescent moon with that star in the middle known as Al-Hilal. So if you do anything untoward with that flag, uh, it can be interpreted as Islamophobia. <laughs> insult of Islam or Islamophobia or, you know, things like that. The Khalistan flag also contains a religious symbol, the Nishan Sahib. So one would expect it to be treated with the respect that one accords to religious symbols. Now, speaking of which, I'm not very sure if the Star of David is a religious symbol or not. I tried to look into it, but it was a, a kind of a complex situation where it is not in the Torah or Talmudic uh, traditions, but it is inextricably inter intertwined with the Jewish faith. So I'm not very sure, but if it is a religious symbol, then it is being um, disrespected openly without any repercussions but similar disrespect for the other flags that I mentioned namely that of Saudi Arabia, Pakistan or Khalistan would invite consequences so and it's not just uh, limited to uh, religious symbols only you have the rainbow flag the pride flag and uh, even when it is painted on a sidewalk or, you know, on a, uh, on a traffic crossing and there are tire marks on it, the police normally say that they are investigating it as a possible hate crime. So flags are sacrosanct or not? That is not clear. And that is where I am getting it. That the, uh, the treatment of uh, the supposed uh, uh, kind of mistreatment of different kinds of flags, the treatment differs. And that is where the crux of the matter lies. 
but specifically talking about uh, Canada, let's say if somebody did something similar with the flag of Quebec, I would imagine that all the politicians would be jumping over each other to be in front of a camera where they can denounce it. I have not seen any denunciation of the burning of the Canadian flag from any politician other than, I think, Melissa Lantzman. So I may be missing a few others. I mean, I could be wrong here, but uh, th there is hardly any uh, uh, objection to this coming from the political quarters. Now, in the same uh, protest and counter-protest within the same sphere, if Israel's flag can be burned, can somebody go ahead and burn the flag of Palestine? No. Because the social mood, uh, at least the dominant social mood, uh, the ones you know that are having a say in the public sphere, they would be denouncing that act. So again, you know, burning Canada's flag in Canada is freedom of expression, but giving similar treatment to the Palestine flag will be treated differently. Why this difference? We need to have one standard now. Let us zero in on the flag of Canada itself. Under what situations would you say that this is freedom of expression when someone either burns it, tears it up, rips it apart, whatever? Let us say there is a citizenship ceremony where someone who is until recently permanent resident has been granted Canadian citizenship and then they do something similar with the Canadian flag during the ceremony, would it go down well? Or would people say that this is not acceptable and there need to be some consequences? Remember, they can be, now, now that citizenship ceremonies can be attended virtually, they can be at home or at some other venue where they can do as they please. Would it be acceptable? Let's say there is someone who is brought to Canada as a refugee and their first act on landing in Canada is to rip apart Canadian flag. Would it affect the processing of their asylum claim? If it is freedom of expression, then it shouldn't. But the person has clearly expressed a distaste for Canada of the extent where they are willing to do something like this publicly. Would we treat it as differently? And if we don't, if we say that this is freedom of expression, then what kind of society are we engendering? Now, <clears throat> there is this charter right thing. But within the same charter, it says that there can be reasonable restrictions on charter rights that the government at its discretion may place. Now, that discretion is not supposed to be unlimited, although sometimes it tends to be. So, I know that I am entering a gray area here. But can the government go ahead and place a reasonable restriction that people who are not citizens of Canada will have consequences for showing disrespect to the symbol of Canada, the flag? I mean, it's something for legal minds to pour over. I'm not a lawyer. But one thing I know, that in the case of Muhammad Haraka, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the protection under the charter is not available to foreign nationals to the same extent that it is available to Canadian citizens. Now, if you say that disrespecting the flag of Canada should be illegal only for foreign nationals. Does it amount to discrimination on the basis of nationality? Probably the, the such a law, if made, would be challenged in court and then the courts will have to decide on whether this is a reasonable restriction on the charter right of the foreign national or not. These are the issues to explore. And uh, unfortunately, on Twitter, the platform being what it is, does not al allow for a, 
detailed uh, exploration of these issues. But I thought I'll make a video and put this in front of you so then you can tell me in the comments what you think about this. Do let me know. Until we meet again, goodbye and be well.